awarding a contract to the Verk Construction Group. Now, I, I have to say that we went through a series of meetings with Verk uh, last year. It started about a year ago, ran into July or August, where we went through a process that the construction industry calls value engineering. I call it cost cutting. Uh, <laughs> You know, we're all laymen, so let's use layman's terms, all right? Uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, we went through that process, a series of meetings. I, I was incredibly impressed with the, uh, uh, well, the vice president of estimating from Burke Construction that uh, has been the, the lead on this from their end, uh, and his willingness and desire to help us find ways to make this project happen at the most affordable cost we could. And uh, his name is Dimitri, and uh, uh, if you go to the Burke Construction Group website, you'll see his, his resume there, or his uh, Vita, and uh, can, can see more about him. But, uh, uh, so at this point, we went through that selection process uh, for the contractor, very similar to a process that we used for finding the architect in terms of pre-qualifying and so on. Um, the uh, a little back, just a couple of things about the background of Burke Construction. Uh, they've been in business for 40 years in Las Vegas, okay? They're, they're not Johnny-come-latelys in town. Uh, they do way more than, well, they do a wide range of projects and uh, uh, coincidentally, um, one of their recent church projects was the Faith Community Lutheran Church on the property formerly owned by Summerlin Presbyterian Church, um, the, the church that uh, was uh, part of the merger that created Grace 11 years ago, almost 11 years ago. So uh, they, they have a, a, a good amount of experience in constructing that. We, we've got a good design with NIT Studios as the architects and uh, a, a real partnership, a three-way partnership between our construction and contract team with NIT and with VERC uh, to see this through and, and make it happen. Um, we met as recently as two weeks ago uh, to nail down the final number uh, that for which the contract would be, and um, that that figure is for materials and labor that they and their subcontractors will provide, and it's referred to as a guaranteed maximum bid. Okay, no ups, no overs. There are some contingencies built into it that they will only spend if they get our approval to spend them. Um, but the con any concern for cost overruns is not our concern. And uh, at that, with that, I will uh, uh, end the background of how we got here. And uh, Jim, shall I just turn it over to Scott and he'll talk about the numbers. I do want to mention that we do have a couple of uh, the bids here. <laughs> and we will have them in the back if anyone wants to read them. Um, unless you're in contracting, it's mostly hieroglyphics. But, um, <laughs> but we have summarized them on the pages you have before you. But I will send this to the back if anybody wants. We're not hiding anything. Here it is. Um, we've asked Scott to bring a little, a little more detail about the, uh, the actual bid. If there aren't any questions about Bruce's presentation, seeing none, I'll bring Scott forward. You should have uh, the handout. I'm going to use that as our uh, guide today, but just remember, I'm just the messenger. I don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> no, I, I, we're very happy with, uh, with the way the numbers came in and, and actually quite astonished that it came in 
close to what we have. I mean, we're, we were close to what we have and what we can afford to borrow. So uh, after, after months and months and months of going more expensive and less expensive, uh, it's amazing how close it came. It's almost a God thing. But Dennis, or, uh, Bruce mentioned that we do, it is a GMAX contract, so we take a risk that the, we, we have a set of plans and specs that, are, that the contractor says, I can do it for this much. So the risk of overages is on them, but they do have, in, in return for that, they have a contingency that, that we need to cover as part of uh, today's uh, vote. So if you look at the uh, top there, um, the top set of numbers is what we're voting on today. That is the contract with Burke, and it's the total amount. After, after several rounds of uh, cutting and adding and making sure that we agree on the scope, um, the construction cost, that's self-explanatory. That, that is the actual cost of the materials and, and labor for our church. The, uh, they have about 20 subs. Um, Burke does most of the work as the general they self-perform a very small amount with their own forces, but most of it is, is, is subcontracted. And just so you know, they, they, they bid the subcontracts against each other. So we've already got the, the benefit of low bids on 90, like 95% of the work. So uh, they, they, in fact, just this last week, one of the subs said, we can't do one of the VE items, and they, so Burke just changed them out. <laughs> they just went to a new subcontractor because they, they wanted to get down to our price. They've been amazing, and they asked if anybody goes on Google and does reviews. They, they love to have reviews. <laughs> um, so the first number is construction costs. The insurance covers the, the uh, contractor, and plus there's a, build a builder's risk policy. If the if the church burns down the day before we move in, it's covered, 100%, it'll be covered. So anything that happens on the site has to be insured. The contractor fee, normally they range from five to 8%, ours is four. So they've already given us a break on the contractor fee. And then the contractor contingency, which we told you about, Bruce said, if, if we agree and they agree, it's something that needs to be added comes out of that contingency fee. So the, the price, uh, the GMAX bid for Burke is 15,800,000. 15, the next set of cost is a little bit less final, but we needed to have some, something for today to talk about the total budget for the project. These are the items that the owner has to pay that aren't included with the contractor's fee. The, um, we have the remaining professional fees, which for our engineers and architects, they're gonna follow us through construction. They have a fee that for shop drawings and reviewing submittals, uh, they charge for that. So that includes that plus some uh, site evaluation costs that we'll have, plus anything extra that, that, like last week, we had a couple of legal descriptions that had to be written, not part of the original scope, but that we needed them for our uh, easements to utility easements. The next group is con connection fees. Those are self-explanatory. Those are fees from the various utility companies to uh, connect our building to their systems. You notice that the water district was al already paid. That was 110,000. We paid it what about a month ago. The, that's another thing I wanted to mention. This is a snapshot of today. We have spent over almost $2 million, not counting the acquisition of the property, which was $3.2 million. So we've spent a lot of money. This is as of today. So it's, these are forward costs. We're not including any back costs that have already been paid. The imp offsite improvement bond, that's, po that's posted by the owner to guarantee that the streets and sewers and, and water system and everything will be built the way it's shown on the plans. That's posted by the owner, not the contractor. 
and then building permits, that's self-explanatory. We have to pay the county for, uh, for our permits and plan check fees. Moving costs, we had, a, we had a group that did a cost estimate for moving the church here over there because we don't want to run out of money and then not, you know, have, have all of us have to do it and bring our pickups and everything. So <laughs> we, we, we will need, we will, we'll need a professional mover to help us with that. Financing costs is for our loan, which is uh, closing costs. It, this is probably high because the, the, the Synod charges points on the loan, but the foundation doesn't. Now we're going to get money from the foundation. I'm sorry? Oh, okay. Uh, it's, I always think it's too loud. Of, it's like booming in your ears. And then GPC contingency. That we need a contingency for us, too, besides the contractors. So that, that totals up to about 16.6. Um, and then the last group of items are things that are in the project, but they aren't necessary to get a certificate of occupancy and move into the building. They're, they're, they're necessary for the operation of the church, but they're, right now they're not in the budget because they're not needed to move in. It's the only reason that they're separate. The, all the costs above it, we have to pay. The ones below are going to be added if we have enough money. So with that, I, we can open this up that for discussion or, or questions. But uh, the next part of this is, is the payment of it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, um, Craig will bring a microphone to you uh, for the questions. Uh, I do want to make sure that we understand what uh, Scott just mentioned. Oh, on the items that are listed at the bottom, the uh, pipe organ, the building exterior signage, new pews for the sanctuary, kitchen appliances. I want you to be aware that this is not, do not read this as we're not planning on putting those in. <laughs> those are a critical part of what we're doing. It's that they are not in the budget one that goes to the contractors, it's not in the contractor's bid, and they are not the things that are required by the permitting process to get the building built. These are things that we will pay for uh, as the completion of the building happens. But you have to get a certificate of occupancy to be able to walk into the building. So the things above that line are the things that are required for us to be able to use the building. Um, so th that's why they're broken out separately. That answer. I just want to make that answers anyone's questions. Okay. Jan? Uh First, uh, you said we've already spent $2 million. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. What, what did we spend that on? You want to answer? Yeah. Uh, but speak up, because I really can't hear you. So. The, the bulk of it is, uh, is professional fees. The, uh, the contract for the architect and the engineer was roughly a $1 million, 900 and some thousand. Um, and they have done their work and turned it in, so they were paid most of it. Um, the other things are for the uh, fees that we've been paying up to now, and uh, uh, to get to get to get the plans to an approvable state. So yes, we have uh, we have spent quite a bit of money out of our uh, building fund. But let's Does say that you, let's say you take out a loan, and uh, uh, that will be for how much, and uh, who's going to pay the loan? The presbytery, or is this uh, the the uh, uh, people of the church? That uh, that'll be in the next uh, discussion. That'll be in the next what? D the next discussion. You mean next next? Uh, yeah, pre okay. that Amy's going to do. Okay. Right. 
Cindy's. We've got Cindy, and then we'll bring it to Ken. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, could you explain what the GPC construction manager is? We have, uh, we have t three parties in this contract. We have the designers, we have the contractor, and then we have the owner. We're the owner. The contractor's out for the contractor. The, the engineers and the architects are out for the... Uh, we need someone on our side that is going to be our eyes and ears in the field to, to uh, clarify discrepancies, anything that the owner needs to uh, decide, like we talked about, if they have an extra, we have to decide if that's really an extra or if that was included in the original scope. So we need someone that's experienced in that role that works for us. And that's not going to be yours truly. <laughs> I've, my, background, my background is civil, and all of the other, I, uh, the other guys, I can say guys because there were guys on the contracts committee, have different areas of expertise, but not vertical construction, not like construction of a building. So we need to hire, we need to hire our person. And I've already talked to two. They're, they, they, they said they could do it for this. It's not going to cost more. I just, we just need to pick one and get going by June. So I hope that does it. So, so I don't know if you, if everyone, I'll make sure I understand. I'm going to go layman term because I'm a layman. <laughs> Who is the project constructor, uh, const, uh, project manager? It is not your pastors. <laughs> That is the first answer. It is not your pastors. You do not want us making decisions about the engineering and the architecture of the building. We, do not, we are not trained with that. And, and our building committee, the civil engineers that we have on our building committee, are people that did mostly foundational work. Uh, they are not people who did the, who are trained and know whether or not the air conditioner is the right size for the building we're doing. And when our contractor comes and says, hey, I can get you a cheaper air condi conditioner, or I, you need a more expensive air conditioner, we need somebody who is trained in the construction field to say, this is the right one, this is the one we want. So it's a manager who's making sure we are getting what we pay for, and that we're getting it done on time and keeping it going so that we don't end up with construction stoppages that take us so much time we don't get it built. Um, is, that, is that accurate, Scott? Yes. Okay. I think Ken Fong had his hand up over there, Craig. That was a good question, Cindy. Thank you. Yeah, I just had one question. What was, what, what type of contingency uh, says GPC contingency for a hundred thousand? What type of examples would would you anticipate for that? Okay, so let me see if I can answer this, Scott. I will give it my best shot. Um, so these are the the things that the owner is responsible for. So say, um, when we take the organ console out, we find out it needs repairs that we were unaware of, then it would come out of that contingency fund. It, it is a best guess of what we might end up, say there's an increase in the cost of pews between now and the time we need to have them delivered. That's our responsibility, not the contractor's responsibility. So we, we're building in a little extra money in case those things happen so that we don't have to stop the project to get you to approve another $10,000 expenditure or something like that. that. That's what that, would, does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, okay, other questions, concerns, compliments? Okay. I got one here. <laughs> yeah, Laura. Uh, could you just explain what's in phase one versus other phases? Did you get that, Jim? 
She said, could you explain what's in phase one and what's not in phase one and what's in other phases? Yes. Uh, you want me to do it? So, um, for those of you who looked at the schematic in the back, one of the ways we were able to bring this down to affordable is we had origi originally, we worked with the contractors saying if we could get everything we want, and they created a scheme for that, and we have reduced it to bring it down to the expense that we can afford. So it is a two-story building with some classrooms upstairs uh, and offices, uh, music facility, and some classrooms downstairs. But there are six additional classrooms that if we could have everything we wanted, we would add those six additional classrooms. They are multi-purpose use, meaning they could be used for different ages, but they are six additional classrooms. Um, in order to reduce the cost of the building, we've made those phase two, and you can see them on the schematic in the back, but those are phase two. We've worked with Rhonda and Lisa, who are the predominant users of our classrooms, to make sure that if we build what is being proposed, we can still do all our children's youth and music programming, including game, with the facility we have. It's a, it'll be a little different. Some people will be moved upstairs, uh, but we also are very aware of what the um, limitations are. You can't have preschoolers upstairs, that sort of thing. Um, and so we've worked with Rhonda and Lisa to make sure that we can accommodate that. We have much more room for growth uh, if we complete phase two, but that's, that's how we were able to, to work that out. Does that answer your question, Laura? Make sure we have, okay. Good question, Bob. Very good question, thank you. Uh, other questions, are we ready to move on with how we finance it? Okay, so. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Dennis. The new church, aren't we? Yeah, the pipe organ yes. is, is going to the new church. Yeah, Dennis's question is, is the pipe organ going to the new church? The answer is uh, a qualified yes, we are. We are taking the pipes that can go with us that are movable. We're taking, I believe, the console. No, we are not. We're getting a new console. Um, we're taking some of the... Uh, I want to make sure I... Uh, David, do you want to answer that question? <laughs> yeah, so they, you plan that we're taking all the pipes. We're hooking it up to an electronic console to cut the code. So all, all the pipes, but we are getting a better organ, which will also have electronics involved in it. Um, so the answer is some of it's new, but what we have, we're taking with us. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Excellent. We're Art? We still have a whole other section, I want you to know, of the funding here, so. <laughs> the uh, fact that the county did not uh, approve the um, permits on time has led us into a huge rent problem here. What financial incentives do we have on all of the people involved in delivering a new occupiable building uh, to assure that we won't incur even more rent uh, because of non-performance or late delivery. Do you want to do that in the financing or do you want to do that? Well, I... All right, are, are you talking about requirements on the contractor to finish on time 
is there's liquidated damages in terms of the the number of months that they have to complete the project if they can't do it on our schedule number one they they would be in breach of contract we could bring an action or secondly we could we could charge them liquidated damages which is how much are we incurring an additional cost as grace because they're not done if it goes a year we may you know we may settle for fifty thousand dollars if we goes I mean, I'm just saying that we could penalize the contractor for not performing. That's, that's very common in the, in the business, unless it's not their fault, if it's, if it's beyond their uh, control. Let's, if we have a 200-year flood out there and the whole site is washed down Durango, we, they can't do anything with that, but we have insurance for that. Well, we are paying for insurance, I notice, is one of the things for the, for the contractor alone, but my guess is that insurance does not cover late delivery of materials to the contractor, things like that, yeah. which translate immediately into $32,000 a month gotcha. rent here. At, it, at least, yeah, if we're lucky. <laughs> if, we're, if we're not evicted from here and we have to go somewhere else, which... Yeah, it probably think, would be to our advantage to look at about the to look at the what twelve or so things that have to happen on time for us to occupy the new building, and the providers of those uh, the ten or so providers who have to provide that stuff, and figure out some way of uh, assuring that they will at least cover our renter while we wait point. for them to perform. <laughs> good point. Jim said over in the contemporary service that. Literally, the contract starts tomorrow. And those things that you're talking about that take a long time to get here will be ordered as early as middle of next week. I mean, that, that's how quick con the contractor has identified some of those things already, that if, if you want electrical boxes here next year, you better order them now. So you're, you're absolutely right, and our contractor Thank God is on top of those things because we're not. <laughs> we don't know what things take a long time to deliver, but but your uh, your concern has been addressed to this point. I think. So I did, I want to summarize that this contract requires they make a commitment to have it done in their time frame that we are agreeing to. If they are not done they can be held accountable for the costs that are incurred by the church afterwards. Unless it is the church that agrees to extend the time, right? So if we were to say, we, oh, we decided we want to build a gymnasium now, um, and so we will extend the time, then that would be our responsibility. But this contract, they are committing to this contract and can be held accountable if they don't complete it. Um, Lena had her hand. They say they can do it in one year. So that leaves us three extra months. That gives us, leaves us three months extra within our lease agreement with the state. Okay. Um, are we ready to move on to financing? Yes. I hear a desire to move on to financing. I'm going to turn it over to Amy. <laughs> well, thank you all. Um, so everybody has the paper in front of them. And as Scott had identified, the uh, estimated construction cost of $16.559 million. In addition to that, we do have 16 months remaining in our rent for the two years, and those funds have been coming out of the building fund and will con continue to do so. So that's another $493,000, which brings the total costs required of $17,052,000. Our estimated funds that we will have available for this project are approximately 14.7 million. 
That includes funds that we already have and the remaining capital campaign commitments that have not yet been given, as well as the estimated interest that we currently own, um, that we are currently on the investments that we have. Um, it's an estimated money that we will continue to earn. And as you all should be aware, we have those funds in T-bills, and those T-bills are currently own, uh, earning approximately 5% plus. So we are making good interest on the monies that we do have. So with that, our estimated loan requirement would be 2.36 million. We would round that up to a uh, loan that we would re recommend taking of $2.4 million. Our source for obtaining the loan, as Scott had mentioned, it will be through Presbytery, utilizing both Synod and the Presbyterian Loan and Investment Program. Their current interest rate is 6.5%. The advantages of utilizing them is that we don't have initiation fees or origination fees, and we do not have to get audited financial statements. So that would be another expense that we do not have to incur. Um, and then during the construction period, we would only pay the interest portion at the time we borrow those funds. And at this point of time, we're estimating that it's approximately March of 2025 when we would have to look to borrow those funds. Um, and at the time of the conversion to the mortgage, we would only have a mortgage of what we actually had to utilize. Uh, the uh, PILP, as it's known, um, they actually, their typical repayment terms are 20 years. Um, you'll note down at the bottom, my last comment is um, a 20 year repayment would equal monthly mortgage payments of $17,900. And an annual mortgage is 200 and almost $215,000. Uh, this would require that once we open our doors, we're gonna have to look to increase our operating budget by 25% to cover that mortgage payment. So any questions with regard to the loan request? Is that 25% doable? That would be a question that we would have to ask ourselves. Um, you know, and it's really looking at, you know, what's God calling us to do? What's, what's our purpose uh, for this church? And what's our mission as we go forward? What's the increase in 2024 over 2023 in the operating cost? Uh, effectively, it was very minimal. So um, we did attempt to hold our cost relatively flat. If you default on a loan to the uh, Synod, what happens then? If we default on the loan? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Matt, that's a great question. Um, and uh, there's the what really happens and what they warn you will happen. So technically, according to the terms of our agreement, they could um, they could foreclose on the property, they could make us move out. Uh, they could take over the church. That is the terms of the, the loan. I mean, it's like a bank, right? They could take it over. 
So then in reality, I don't want to, I don't want to tell you this so that I, I don't want it to be your strategy. The reality is the synod is us. And um, what we know is the synod can't afford that debt. They don't want us to go bankrupt because they can't afford the debt. They could theoretically sell the property and recoup that money, although they would barely recoup enough to pay the debt, let alone the, the cost. So, but our equity is, but our, equity is so huge, their, loss, their risk would be so tiny. They did an eighteen million dollar church for two nine. Yeah. They're not that for much. Yeah. They're not going to let that foreclose. Yeah. They're, they're, they, there's nothing in it for them to uh, to have to foreclose. It, it, what's in it for them is to help us out and renegotiate a better deal. Um, so our, our position is very strong. Um, do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? They don't, they don't really benefit from foreclosing on us even though that's the threat. Uh, a bank isn't gonna foreclose on a loan where they don't make any money. Um, right. So, and they're us. They want us to be successful and so they would work with us. That's the, rea the reality is they would work with us. The threat is they would foreclose. When this is all over with, and it's recorded in Clark County Assessor's Office, who's the owner of the property? Is it Grace Presbyterian Church, or is it PC USA? USA? Who owns the property? That is a very uh, difficult question to answer. In our bylaws, in, in the Constitution, we hold the property in trust, no, the Presbytery holds the property in trust for us. So they own the property. However, because of our church's history, um, they have never really held the, the deed, the Presbytery has never really held the deed to the pro property. So what happened is, just to give you a little history, I'm sorry to bring all this up, but when the previous pastor, Ames Broen, sued the church, the presbytery gave the deed back to us because they didn't want to be liable if we lost the lawsuit. And then when I came as the next pastor, uh, and they said, could you send the deed back to us? And I said, well, now we're involved with a, uh, a, a lawsuit over the Project Neon, so I think we should hold on to it. So we held on to the deed. Um, the question is, will it be signed over at the point in which we go to the, take a loan? And I don't know. So the truth is, it's currently held by us, but there is a constitutional requirement that it's held by them, and they could, it would get ugly if you were to ask who owns it. Um, but again, whoever owns it also owns the debt, and they don't want that. <laughs> um, so it's a uh, right now the, the ownership of the land of Oquendo and Durango is in the name of Grace Presbyterian Church. Yeah. Right now the land at Durango and Oquendo is in the name of Grace Presbyterian Church. It will probably stay that way. Um, but what we don't want to do is get into, into a fight over it. We, we want to there, there are better ways to handle it than to argue over who owns it. Does that answer your question? I've, been, I've tried to be as vague as possible. <laughs> because if we raise the flag and say that we own our own property, then the Presbytery has the ability to come in and say, um, well, it should be us, and ask for it. But the truth is, Scott's on the trustees, I'm the chair of the Committee on Ministry, and Grace has a lot of influence in the Presbytery, so we've just not asked for it. Um. One thing, Jay, that you should keep in mind, too, is uh, the Presbytery actually co-signs this loan with us. It, if the church goes away tomorrow, the Presbytery is stuck with that loan. So it, it, it's like scratch your back with one hand and then slap you in the face with the other. So it, but they're taking an awful risk as well. 
because when when we review a loan application from a church, like 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 Jim said, I just got off the trustees as chair. But the, um, when you look at the loan, you see how much is the presbytery risking in, the, in this venture, and they're already 100% behind us because, like Jim said, we're like very important to keep going. Our our success is the presbytery's success. If we don't pay our dues, they'll go broke. That's right. <laughs> That's the deal. <laughs> So, so the truth is, as much as this is po political in the church, it, we are pretty well leveraged to get our way. Um, okay, Jan. I just didn't hear this correctly. Uh, what will be the amount of mortgage amount per month? What's the payment each month that will come about? Um, well, as stated, the, the, the payment, including interest, is approximately 18000 a month. I, I'm sorry, what? 18000 a month. Oh, okay. 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 I'm going to, unless there's more questions, I'm going to move us on to the voting for this or against it. I'm going to just say one thing that is um, maybe in influential, but I'm just going to say that we're building a church that will be valued between 18 to 21 million dollars, and our debt on it will be a little north of two million dollars. It's not a bad deal. It might be a lot to afford, but we are. We've worked very hard to get us at this point, to this point, and um, there is a, there's going to be two motions brought before you, and I'm going to ask that we uh, do these by written ballot, but that we vote on them both at the same time. Uh, Craig, could somebody bring me a, uh, one of the official ballots that has the accurate numbers on it? I only have the one we were working on earlier this week. So, Jim, I had a, there was somebody who came to me and asked me if I could ask a question of, can we pay the loan off in less than 20 years without penalty? Okay. Yes. Wouldn't that's that like be wonderful? A, but I, they just wanted to ask. They do it all the time. They, yeah. That's, you, you can have a separate fundraiser and pay that off in a okay. very short time. That's like asking if the church would take a donation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes, th that's right, unless that means that the pastors have to leave. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we can pay it off if we had more money. And in fact, one of the things we're going to be talking about is somebody wants very to... soon is about how to pay it off. We have one more to... question, Jim. Okay. Dennis? Yeah, has the loan, when will the uh, loan be applied for? Has it been applied for yet? Amy, Amy answered that. You said it wasn't until March, right? Uh, no, no. So it'll be tomorrow. It'll be tomorrow that. Uh, uh, yeah. So the, the loan application will go in as soon as tomorrow. As tomorrow. Um, we have everything prepared, and uh, it is important for us to get this approved before we actually commence work. They can begin, but um, we would. It would take about three to four weeks for the approval. Well, I think we, all sh we should all uh, uh, pray that uh, maybe something will happen that we won't need that much uh, loan. So. Amen. Thank, thank you. Um, okay, so there are two, there are two motions that are t intimately tied together, so I'd like to bring them both at the same time. It's, it's a little um, unusual to do this in Robert's Rules, but it is the most efficient. The first is... And, we're, and w would you please ha start beginning handing out the ballots? The first is, shall the Congregation of Grace Presbyterian Church approve the financing of the new facility building project with a loan of not more than 2400000 This loan will be added to the building fund, which consists of money from the settlement of the state of Nevada and the capital campaign 
to make a total project cost of $16,559,000. So the first is the funding motion. Um, and that is brought by your moderator. Does that require a second? Let's just, we'll take a second if anybody would have been seconded by a bunch of people. Okay. Okay, so that one is before you, and the second one is tied to it because we can't do this without the money, is shall the Congregation of Grace Presbyterian Church authorize the session through its corporate officers to enter into an agreement with the Burke Construction Company to complete the construction phase of the new facility? This agreement shall not exceed $15,803,000 as indicated in the bid proposed by the Burke Construction Company. Those are the two uh, motions that are brought before us. They are not amendable because amending these or changing this would mean we wouldn't be able to move forward. So um, we're bringing those forward and the que if there's any discussion, now is the moment. If not, we will move to a vote. Yeah, Bonnie? Mr. Chairman, Bonnie says, faithfully, if they build it, if we build it, they will come. I want to make sure you all know we're not building a baseball diamond. We're building a church. Um, <laughs> Uh, we need we need a couple more ballots up here, Craig. We'll also save quite a bit on utilities. This is a very inefficient building. We'll have state of the art AC the heaters right up front, and we'll use a lot more up here. <laughs> One for Amy also. Oh. Okay, please know that you need to be a member of the congregation to vote. Um, okay, was there another question? Yeah, one. Oh. I just want to make sure you all heard that, so I'm going to repeat it. <laughs> it's a thank you for those who've worked so hard to get us to this point. Thank you for that. Okay, so, so here's our process. Please mark your ballots, fold them in half, and take them to the center. We will have people pick them up. Who's tallying? The, do we have people tallying in the back? Okay, we, maybe we didn't think about that. Um, Lynn, you're, Lynn, you'll get some people in the back to, who will tally the ballots. Okay, I'm going to move us on while it's being tallied because we have one more thing you all need to understand. And I am assuming that this is going to pass. If it does not pass, then this future discussion uh, is moot. But if this passes, we have been voted to indebt our church at, at basically $2.4 million. And the next question is, how will we pay that off? And we can pay it off by raising more funds or reducing our costs. And the session has been struggling with this, and many of you have heard that we've been struggling with this. And one of the proposals that came forward was the idea of saving money by moving out of this facility early in order to save on the rent. We've had a task force, and um, they are ready to bring that proposal forward to the, con to the congregation. But we haven't presented that because until we got to this phase, we didn't know if it was necessary. 
Um, so we are going to call a meeting for two weeks from now, a congregational meeting. The session is calling that meeting. Uh, I'm just looking at my calendar for the date. That will be on April 28th at the same time. However, it's not fair to just give you that proposal without time to consider it. And of course, there are other things besides just saving money. We could, we could consider having another uh, capital campaign or asking our donors in the capital campaign to give, if you were to give an extra, continue giving for an extra year, it would cover our um, rent costs. Uh, so there are other things, but we want to make sure you have a chance to consider this. And to do so, we are proposing that there would be town hall meetings. If somebody would be willing to come grab these. Uh, town hall meetings uh, to discuss this proposal on Tuesday, April 16th. They're all at the church at 6.30 p.m., Thursday, April 18th at 12 noon, Saturday, April 20th at 12 noon, Wednesday, April 24th at 5 p.m., and Saturday, April 9th at 9 a.m., and we would also make these, uh, we will make them online so people can watch the town hall meetings, um, and then a congregational meeting April 28th at 11.30 a.m. Uh, so you all understand what I'm, discussing, I'm saying is, now that we have this debt, we want to start looking at ways that we can reduce costs and or raise our income. Um, and one of those is this proposal of considering uh, to go to a new facility early. Uh, well, all that would be discussed in these town hall meetings, but uh, and I don't, I, we're not really voting on that now, but uh, so uh, I heard somebody say where, um, and that would, the proposal that's coming forth from the, uh, from the uh, task force that studied this is to move to a school uh, until the construction's complete in order to pay less money in rent. Um, and of course, the other option, one of the options would be to just pay the rent and raise the funds. But those things are going to be discussed at the town hall meetings and then we'll bring it forward for a vote. Jan? Okay. So I'm a, yeah, I'm a little out of, my, out of line discussing that because we don't really have that proposal forward. If you come to the meetings, we'll present all the numbers and what, what our options are. Uh, otherwise, you're asking me to do stuff off the top of my head which, as a preacher, I can do. <laughs> but I might just make stuff up. <laughs> Dave? All that stuff's going to come up at the town hall in the next congregational meeting. Uh, Dave asked what would happen to the organ and stained glass while we go to this school. All that stuff has been studied. There's details on it. It's just, we, we need to have a specific, it's a big deal if we want to do this, and we need to have specific meetings where everybody can get all the information. We, but, but we need to get this done first. Vote to build the building and to pay for it, and then we'll move on to the next thing at our next meetings. So we're, we are, mostly what we're doing is waiting, and I am, um, announcing that we're going to do a congregational meeting and a town, town hall meetings to discuss this. We don't need a vote for that because it has been approved by the session, uh, but I want you all to know that that's the next step, okay? Um, I feel like the Jeopardy theme song should be playing while we wait for the vote. Um, <laughs> We will post the dates of the meeting on the website. We're handing out the forms. 
We will also be sending out emails tomorrow. Maggie. We, we want to hear those uh, concerns and uh, solutions. That's a great, that's one of the options. We want to do those at the town halls and at the next meeting, because that's when we're voting. And um, it's hard to have that debate until we're able to give everybody the information. So I'm not trying to put you off or ignore you. It just feels like we have not been able to give people the information because we weren't at that stage. And so let, let, us, um, let us get it all out there. We want a vote and we want the congregation to tell us what to do. And I can tell you that we are not bringing this forward because we want to push it on you. It was an idea that was brought up and we're dealing with it seriously. Um, yeah. Um, I know you said that uh, you, you have a, uh, a list of things that you're going to let us know and we get uh, explained to us at these uh, um, meetings. Are we, if, uh, can we add to them if we're not, you know, can we suggest things also? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We're making, they did a study and, and a lot of the information we could approve it outright and go, or we could use some of that information for other things. They're the ones who did the study on how much it costs to move and how much it costs to um, rent storage space. And I mean, a lot of work has been done. It's been a yeoman's job. We want to make sure you have all that information before we make any sorts of decisions. Hey, we have an answer. We will now. Um, <laughs> Heather asked if at the town halls we would, you know, as they go on, we would share the discussion that happened at the previous one so that people know what's the kind of common discussion in the church. That's a great idea. So, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Pardon? Okay, all right, the, the vote is in. Um, uh, it was handled by Price Waterhouse. Um, <laughs> and the answer is amazing. We had 100 votes, 100 people here voting, and we had 100 yes for the, uh, the indebtedness. <clears throat> And we had 100 yeses for the uh, authorizing Burke to construct. So we are <laughs> off to the races. I have taken all the time up here uh, and uh, as leading this congregational meeting, I would like to ask Pastor Craig, who is as much a pastor in this church as I am, and make sure that to come and lead, lead us in prayer. Blessings flow, praise him, all creatures here below, praise him above the heavenly hosts, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Loving God, we give you praise and thanks for your faithfulness to us. Lord, we walk this uh, journey uh, with you leading. 
We ask that you would keep leading us. We thank you for all the hard work and for all the consideration, for the gifts that people have given, for the wisdom that they have shown, for the people who have asked really good, hard questions, not just today, but all the way along, for some decisions we still have to make. Lord, be faithful to us. We know you will. And we give you all the praise and glory, and we look forward to the days ahead. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.